to another TH Cooney art video. In this video I'm going to be showing you a montage of all my artworks over the years. There's quite a number here so this video is going to be in two parts and this is part one. Image number one is an illustration from one of the many versions of my book. This one was called the Icarus Archives which is what this image is. Basically it's a sort of Dan Brown meets Time Team riddle made of images and hidden pictures and messages. As you can see I've used some of the Greek alphabet to create the letters there. The beginning of each one forms the term Icarus. And throughout the book the heroes use this image to answer the riddles and figure out where to go and what to do. Kind of cliche I know but that was just one of the ideas at the time. This is a game I designed called Caribbean Conquest. It's kind of like Warhammer, and it's based mostly on parts of the Caribbean. Usually consisting of four players and armies of ships, and the flagship of each army would be the Black Pearl, the Endeavour, the Flying Dutchman, and a ship that I invented for a book that I wrote called The Ocean Phoenix. I'll get to that in a minute. As you can see, it's sort of kind of like a chess game. The grids is where you would move your ships and you roll the dice and you can move in any direction and you choose whether to battle ships that you encounter or capture them. The game never really took off so it's just portfolio now. This was the start of a rather sensitive subject about my enjoyment for drawing love and romantic scenes. As you can see this is called Isn't She Lovely and basically it's a sort of intimacy scene between a couple with swirling colours. This was the first time I'd ever done this, so as you can see it's a little bit poor, but it's not that bad. This one is called Angel-Human Hybrids, which is pretty much as it describes. This is a species of humanoid with angel wings. In my opinion, if humans had wings they wouldn't be feathers, they would be reptilian and skin-like. And as you can see, the male has got horns on his elbows, which indicates that the male would compete for the female. And this guy is victorious. But the idea here is that I wanted to base it in a sort of futuristic style. The species of human and the horns would suggest that this has been a genetic tradition that's been going for millennia. And it's gone far into the future, which would suggest what their clothing means. You may notice the tear there in the corner. I was doing some spring cleaning when I was staying in student digs at uni and I just picked it up and tsh, my heart made a similar noise. Speaking of angels, this one's called Angel of Mine. It's another one of the intimacy scenes and this was before I decided that I wouldn't think humans would have feathers for wings. But it was part of the experiment to see if I could do wings and make them look realistic as though they really are birds' wings. But what I was also experimenting with here was fire. The fire sort of worked, but it needed an improvement over time. I was particularly concentrating on the reflection of fire in water, and I must say it turned out quite well. But she needs a nose job. Fly, Macrities, fly. Aston Martin call it the Vanquish, we call it the Vanish. This was the illustration that I did when I was at uni. My flatmate was an Italian car designer and I learned quite a few techniques from him when it came to blending and smoothing out colours by using lighter fluid. And I thought, I really want to give this a go. So I drew one of my favourite cars at the time, the Aston Martin Vanquish. Ocean Phoenix. Now it was called the Earth Phoenix because in the story it emerged from the ground of a desolate island, but I decided that Ocean Phoenix sounded a bit better. This is a magical ship supposedly constructed by the Aztecs. I know that doesn't make any sense because I was really making this up quite roughly at the time, but it does things itself. You give it orders, it releases the sails itself, it repairs itself, which means you know you can do almost any level of damage to it and it won't, it won't sink. It fires the cannons itself. And the best thing, it flies. Actually spreads wings and flies in the sky. 
I was really proud of this piece, but the story wasn't very original. So, so it wouldn't be published. I love the Dan Brown novels. I recommend them all. Make sure you read them. I would particularly recommend Da Vinci Code, Angels and Demons, Lost Symbol and Inferno. Those are my favourites. Lost Symbol is my favourite. But in this case, I'd be talking about Angels and Demons. I love ambigrams. Did you know that the word ambigram and the very thing ambigram itself was invented for Dan Brown's Angels and Demons by a spectacular artist? I've forgotten his name. I'll probably put it here. An ambigram is a word that looks the same upside down or back to front. You might be thinking, isn't that an anagram? No, an anagram is a word whose letters can be rearranged to form another. This is an ambigram, which is the same word for ambidextrous, meaning both ways. This was another idea in my novel, where the bad guy and good guy would have these images tattooed on their chests. Well, not exactly tattooed, their skin is actually a different colour, a black ink colour. It's, it's a sort of follow your destiny kind of thing, because the equilibrium refers to the fact that they are both the same, but opposite sides of the coin. There's the bad guy and the good guy, but they both have the same destiny. That is horrendously cliché, so I dropped it. Oh! Sorry. This is an explosion experiment that was meant to be caused by my Hellmouth engine video. Here's the video. Make sure you give it a watch, you'll like it. This is pretty much the damage it does when it fires its beam down from space. This would be a 500 megaton explosion. We're talking so massive that it punches through four of Earth's five atmospheres. I love explosions and I love the physics behind this sort of thing, so that's why I drew it. Now I know this isn't a work of art, but it is a million to one chance happening photograph. I was doing this project at uni, a sort of advantage module, alongside my main degree. Photography, the digital image. The project was to produce a series of photos based on your life, and your, and your preferences and your style. And I took several photos of a bonfire celebration. And I took this picture of the fire, and when I uploaded it, people said, Look, there's a skull in it. There's a skull in the fire. Can you see that? I was like, what? What? I was like, oh my god, there is a skull in the image. There must be a trillion to one chance that the flames would just happen to form a partial image of a skull right when I took the picture. I thought, so lucky. That has really got to be a unique image. I lost a fair series of motivation on this project because there are thousands of different guns designed for hundreds of different sci-fi stories, games, books, films, whatever, but I did it anyway. This is a series of standard issue weaponry drawn for the super soldiers in my novel. You've got your different kinds of handgun there and assault rifles, particle weapons, miniguns obviously. I was quite proud of this piece but that's really as far as it went. During my time as student digs, I did this sort of challenge with a fellow flatmate named Michael. He was a comic book expert and this was one of his characters. Her name is Lady Noir III. The challenge was that he draws one of my characters, which turned out to be the illusionist, in his style and I draw one of his characters in my style and this was the result. There were some consistency errors that he pointed out, but that was what the challenge was. However, I might have failed on her cape slightly. It kind of looks like a stiff plastic-like material, when it should have had more creases and more grace. This was my masterpiece at the time. That was before The Forces of Evil became my masterpiece. This was a scene in one version of my second novel. This was where the main protagonist goes through this massive deadly temple full of traps and dangers and challenges. And this was the final challenge, a gigantic monster with tentacles for legs called the Thunderlord. 
I quite like things that have got the first part of their name as thunder. Okay, you can go now. Yeah, you can go now, yeah. This was a car I designed myself called the Maelstrom. Whatever the number is, you can see it there. I can't, this is a green screen. I was complimented by my Italian car designer friend while I was staying in student gigs. And he quoted that I got certain parts right, like the side vents of the windows sort of leading into the wheel. That was really well done. But he did say that it was covered with far too many air vents. Still, it was a long time since I designed this and my taste in cars has sort of changed. My favourite type of car is the Lamborghini. I like Aston Martins and most Audi cars, but my favourite car does not exist. And I think I'll promote that. It was designed by a person at Coventry University who was doing the automotive design course. It's called the Lamborghini Diamante. I'll link you to a video here. This car is absolutely astounding. I strongly recommend you check out this video. Those of you who like Disney will instantly tell that this is Maleficent. And let me clarify that. Maleficent, not Maleficent. Those of you who have seen my Maleficent transformation video, here it is check it out, will know that I'm very partial to Maleficent. I love this character. It's where my fascination for characters with a lot of pride and majesty came from. My skills with drawing fire sort of improved, but from what you can see down here, the fire looks solid, like some kind of sculpture. It's meant to be more transparent than that, but it was a work in progress. And this is a challenge that my dad asked me to do. He wanted me to draw Maleficent transforming into the dragon only in pencil. I sort of cheated by pausing the film in that section and using that as a guide. But there you are. I'm running out of ideas for ways of bringing things on and pushing them off. Well, you haven't done the baseball bat one yet. Baseball bat? I haven't got a baseball bat though. And this was an idea inspired by Kill Bill 2. I love those films. I'm trying to say that this epic master of martial arts teaches most of the soldiers their skills. But that doesn't make sense because the organisation is millennia old and it consists of tens of billions of soldiers. So how one master can train all those, I don't know. And it's horrifically cliché because it's a carbon copy of Pai Mei from Kill Bill 2. But what I was really experimenting with here was the flowing of clothing and hair, with a slight bit of inspiration from Hero, the Jet Li movie, where those two ladies, Flying Snow and Moon, were having a duel in the leafy forest. And the wind is blowing and she's sort of standing like that, with her sword out, and her cape and hair is flowing in the wind and leaves. So that's where that image sort of comes from. And that was the end of part one of my artwork montage. Here's part two. Click it. Click it. Click it.